Welcome to this part two of five part video series, Networking in Oracle's Gentoo Cloud with me, Atul Kumar from Team Ketonin Academy. And in this video, we are going to cover three ways to connect to Oracle Cloud. But if you have not yet watched part one or completed the task given in the first video, then I highly recommend you to pause this video here and then do these three tasks. So task one is register for this free series at ketoninacademy.com forward slash 1009321. Then task two is create a cloud trial account using free step-by-step -step guide given in cloud01. That's ketoninacademy.com forward slash cloud01. And then task three is confirm that you've created the cloud trial account or already have this cloud trial account by leaving a comment in our community ketoninacademy.com forward slash 10932QA. We are going to use this cloud account in this video and as well as subsequent videos. Now let's look at three ways to connect. That is connecting using public IP, then using IPsec VPN tunnel and third fast connect. So if you look at this diagram on right hand side, we covered this in video one as well. So this is my Oracle cloud network in the center and right side is where users are coming from internet. And on left hand side is you have customers data center or on-premise and some users are coming from this on-premise data center. So first look at those coming from internet. And if you're testing it right now that we are going to go do towards end of this video, then you will connect using public IP. So if your users are coming from the internet and you want to connect from the internet onto the OCI, then make sure the machine that you would like to connect from the internet, that machine is deployed with a public IP. That means you need to understand what is public IP and private IP. Now talking to the IPs on a Linux or Windows machine, you can assign multiple IPs to a machine or instance. We call it compute instance in Oracle Cloud. So ensure that if you want to connect to a machine over the internet using WAN, then that machine will be configured or must be configured using a public IP. So if you know the answer, then leave it as a comment. And if you don't know the answer, then ask it under comment. So the question is, how do you uh, differentiate that a particular IP is a public IP or private IP? by just looking at that IP address. And as a little hint for you, check out RFC 1918. Now, as I was telling you that you can have multiple IPs on the machine, that IP can be a reserved IP that's reserved for longer duration and it lives beyond the life cycle of the instance. Or you can have a epiphemeral IP, which is a short lived IP and only available during the instance lifetime or compute instance lifetime. So that's the option one to connect to Oracle Cloud. Now, second way to connect as shown here in the diagram is connecting using IPsec VPN tunnel. And that IPsec VPN tunnel is typically used to extend your OCI network that is VCN within OCI network as if it's an extension to your on-premise network so that users who are connecting from your on-premise network should are not connecting on the public IP or you don't want to designate that server as a public IP because public IP is a not a secure way. So you define a private IP on that machine and or you as a client connect to these machines over the private IP, but using the VPN secure VPN tunnel. Now, this is a diagram for VPN tunnel where left hand side represent your on-premise network, right side represents Oracle cloud infrastructure. And in that we have created a VCN or virtual cloud network of CIDR 172.16, CIDR 16. In on-premise, you have a, another network of 10.0, CIDR 16. So you are creating a dedicated VPN tunnel and one end of the tunnel is connected to the CPE, that's customer premise equipment. Other end of the tunnel is connected 
to this DRG that's component on OCI and are attached to a virtual cloud network. So DRG stands for dynamic routing gateway. And then you need to also create the static route. So the connection from on-premise can go to the cloud or connection from cloud can go to the on-premise using this static route. Now we are going to discuss about this DRG or static routing in the next video. Now, if you're creating the IPsec VPN tunnel, it's a seven step process where first you create a virtual cloud network or VCN in OCI. Then you create a DRG that's dynamic routing gateway. Then you attach this dynamic routing gateway to the VCN. Then at your customer premises, you need to update your router to route the traffic to customer premise equipment. You also need to create a CP customer premise object in your OCI. And then you from the DRG that's part of OCI. Then you create a IPsec connection and provide the static route in that DRG so that connection from the OCI can go to the on-premise. Now I cover this seven step process in our advanced networking module in our cloud certification training. So now this end to end seven step process I cover in my Oracle cloud certification training in detail. So that's the second way to connect. First way is using public IP. Second way is using IPsec VPN tunnel. Now the third way to connect to Oracle cloud from on-premise is fast connect. This fast connect is a dedicated high bandwidth pipe connected from on-premise to the cloud. And for high availability, you can have multiple pipes or multiple fast connect locations. So you're connecting from on-premise to the Oracle cloud using a dedicated thick pipe with a higher bandwidth. Now the fast connect is the most expensive solution out of these three, whereas connecting over IPsec VPN tunnel, that's the most common method and also secure method to connect. Now connecting via the public IP, the one that I explained at the start, that's what we are going to use in testing the connectivity in today's hands-on. So now here's the task for you today. So first thing you should do is you should log into the Oracle trial account that you created in part one of the series. So go to cloud.oracle.com, click on sign in, enter your cloud account name, click next and provide your password for this user ID and password to log in. Once you log in, if you are fairly new or you've just created this account, you can click on customize dashboard and click on compute show. Similarly, you can see or do database and click show. And you will see these two tiles here, compute and database. Both will take you to the Gen2 cloud that is OCI. So I'm going to the OCI, click on open service console. So first thing you're going to do is go to this hamburger menu on left, go to networking. And first thing we'll do is create a virtual cloud network. That's the first and important thing you do. So you can pick up any one CIDR like 10.0 and then CIDR 16. I already have created this virtual cloud network, so I'm not going to do this. The next task we for this activity, we are going to create a, either a database or a Linux machine. When you create the database, it automatically gives you an access to the Linux machine. So, but before I we go on to the creating a Linux machine or to the database, I'll show you where do you configure this fast connect. So this is where you connect create a fast connect. This is where you create customer premise equipment for VPN or fast connect. This is where you create dynamic routing gateway or DRG. So once you have created the network or VCN, then you go to compute and click on instance. This is how we are going to create a Linux or Windows machine. I'm going to create a Linux machine. So create, click on create instance. You can leave or keep the default root compartment. Now, if you have any question what a compartment means, go to ketoneinacademy.com forward slash OCI 11, where I've covered all these basic concepts. So you create a name, make sure you select the availability domain. And in the next video, I'm going to cover these concepts like what is a region availability domain. You provide all the required details, including SSH keys that we've created in part one activity guide. Now, important thing to note here is that because we want to assign a public IP to this machine so that we can connect over the internet, this 
will be done by subnet. So there are two types of subnets that I have not yet covered that we are going to cover in next part is public and private subnet. So when you are creating the compute or an operating system, make sure that you create that inside the public subnet. So when you create this inside the public subnet, it automatically assigns a public IP. Now you can go to the advanced options and under networking, make sure you have assigned public IP address here. Now if you can still assign in second IP or virtual network interface card as I was telling you earlier, as a public IP. So make sure that assigned public IP is important and you create this compute here. Now, once this is done, you will get an IP address on this machine and then you can, by default, it will automatically open port 22 because if you have selected the public IP here, if the 22 port is not open, you can go to security list and open that port 22. Again, we'll cover these things in the next video. So this is if you want to create a compute or a Linux machine or a Windows machine and connect over the internet. Other method, you might be the DBA if you have to create the database. You go again here database, click on bare metal VM and Exadata. We are going to create a database system, but we will create a virtual machine or the database on virtual machine. Now you provide all the details of the database. Again, the important thing to note here is that you'll be selecting the public subnet to create the database. Again, that's not the secure way. Typically on the enterprise deployment, you're going to create this database on an internal subnet or a private subnet and open the port from security list, selective ports like database port 1521, but only from the application tier or the bastion host. So you will be selecting the network, virtual cloud network, then you'll be selecting the subnet inside that and in order to assign the public IP, you'll be selecting the public subnet on this database. And that's how you'll get the public IP on the machine on which this database will be installed. So once you have created the machine or the database on which machine is running, you will get the IP address or public IP address, and then you can connect through PuTTY on port 22. If you want to connect on 1521, you won't be able to open because by default, security list blocks that port number 1521. So you may now have to go and create some ingress rules. And that's we are going to look at in third video. Well, that's it for today. And in next video, I'll cover the basic connectivity concepts like virtual cloud network, subnet, firewall, dynamic routing gateway, internet gateway, routing tables, etc. And those are the building blocks for deploying your applications or databases on Oracle's Gen2 Cloud. So now go and create a machine for yourself or a database. And if you hit any issues or if you have any doubts, then post it in our private Facebook community under thread k20academy.com forward slash 10932QA, where 10932 is the certification exam number and 12 QA, 12 is the series and QA is question answer. And final word, if you like today's video, then don't forget to share it with your colleagues. Remember, we learn better when we learn in group. Most of my learnings, which are, what I've achieved is by sharing. So make sure you share this video and also share your tips. If you know something, if you're already working, then help others in our community. And I'll see you in next video soon. So stay tuned.